It's homecoming weekend, and that means one thing. The alumni are back. Hey, everyone. I'm Ashley McGettrick. And I'm Eric Halpern. Welcome to Elon Next, success after Elon. With all the outstanding Elon alums back on campus, it's the perfect time for you to start networking for your future career. And we have alumni from all different fields of communications ready to tell us how they found success after graduating under these oaks. So let's head inside the School of Communications to hear from these grads on how to get from campus to career. Well, thank you all so much for coming to join us today for our first panel. But before we kick it off, we want to know who we're talking to. So let's get a quick introduction of our panelists. Audrey De Gregorio works as an account manager at Alexander Street Press. Mary Kate Brogan is a copy editor and designer at Roanoke Times Newspaper. And Lindsay Richards is a social media specialist at Pilot Media. So our first question, uh, some of you have, were just here last year, some of you were here you know, a few years ago. Um, but while you were at Elon, what is one skill you wish you would have worked on more? Speaking in front of people. So I definitely, well, which is a great now. example. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So hi, let's see how I did. Um, so definitely while I was in school, pu um, public speaking, took that class that was great, um, did everything there, had all the lessons, but I took it my freshman year. So then when I came in, you know, interviewing was fine. Um, going in and speaking with you know, business people and everything was all good, but it was when I was going in and doing social media training with larger groups, um, sometimes okay. upwards of 20, that I came in and I was like, okay, this is a lot of people. And so the public speaking was definitely something that I had to kind of practice in front of me or on my own and you know, research and do stuff there, but that was something I wish I would have practiced more. So homework there. doesn't end when you graduate. You still have to do your Correct. homework. Yes, yeah. no, it okay. doesn't. And Mary Kate, I know you were in ELN because I worked with you only yeah. a few years ago. <laughs> uh, what's something you wish you would have worked on more? I mean, honestly, the public speaking aspect is a is a big thing. Uh, I am currently doing wire editing, which means I pull everything from different news sources and get worldwide news, but I have to present that budget to the managing editor and the news editor right. and everybody every single day. And I just print it out early so I can practice because it's very important to be able to present yourself well in front of people. And now we have a question from a student who I think, Audrey, you might be able to help us with this one. Uh, a journalism student who's looking to pursue a career in, well, journalism. And I know most of you aren't really producing your own content, but you do see content produced every day uh, and you witness it in your workplaces. So let's see if we could help this student out. Hi, my name is Meredith Stutz. I'm a junior interested in news reporting. And my question to the panel is, how did you go about finding your own unique way of telling stories? Well, mine is actually a very unique way. Um, the publishing that my company does is actually online research databases. So we compile a lot of um, written works from different people. Um, so when I was an intern, though, for a newspaper, you know, we just, whatever's interesting to you, I think you just need to pursue. I think that you should always pitch whatever you want to do. Um, if they if it gets shut down, you just do the best with what you can get. Um, but for us at my company, um, we actually talk to students and we talk to faculties because we're creating these online databases for university students. Um, so we make sure that we do our research on what's relevant now and then go find the content that way. Very nice. And, uh, Mary Kate, uh, you, like I said before, were with ELN with us and you were pitching stories there. And now are you pitching stories at your current job? Uh, I've pitched one story, and the story I pitched was because I kind of stumbled upon it. Uh, there was a uh, massive car accident on my drive home. And uh, so basically a lot of the stories I pitch are hard news. You know, we, we hear the scanner, the police scanner in the newsroom, and we try to pursue those stories. But a lot of the stuff that I've been, you know, pitching recently has been uh, things that I find interesting, definitely, um, but also things that uh, the sources that we're constantly in contact with, um, things that they have going on, kind of trying to elaborate on uh, you know, some of the programs that they have going and the interesting mm. things that they do. Eyes and ears always open. Yes. <laughs> well, for our next question, we're actually going to throw it to our audience. Eric is over there uh, with a student who has a question for you guys. Yeah, thanks, Ashley. I'm here with senior print and online journalism Michael Papish. So, Michael, what question do you have for the panel? Yeah, I was wondering, um, were there any aspects of your first job that you didn't expect? Like, were there things that you were asked to do that you, that you hadn't had experience with? And how did you deal with that? Lindsay, how about you? Um, 
With my job, when I came in, uh, like I said, there I run social media for a handful of our clients, mm -hmm. and then we do training for others. So one thing that blindsided me about that was that I was going to be such an integral part of our strategic planning committee. So how are we going to go to market selling social media to people, um, or what kind of platforms are we going to have? So I guess the best advice in that regard is to prepare to be working with people that are very high up in your company, off chance. You know, just because you're a new hire doesn't mean you're going to be living at your little desk in the corner the whole time. Um, so getting called up and being asked to carry those big responsibilities definitely is something to be prepared for and you know, know how to handle them professionally. So. Can't hide in the cubicle. So no. <laughs> Good. And Audrey, how about you? I would say something very similar. I think uh, a lot of times we graduate and we think, okay, we're going to have a first job. It's going to be really entry level. We won't have as much responsibility. Be prepared to be thrown into situations that you would never expect and to get responsibility because we're fresh out of college. We're, we have fresh eyes on a lot of things and management does see that. Um, I can speak from experience. I, I love when my direct reports come to me with new things that they learned in school or new ideas um, because it keeps our company uh, relevant in the market. So um, bring your own twist to it, but don't think you're just going to sit around and do nothing. Be ready. Opportunities yeah. <laughs> come all the time. So great. Well, thank you guys so much for enlightening us with all of your experience after Elon. And I know I can't wait to put all your wisdom to use. Coming up on Elon Next, I sat down with some alumni now working in the broadcast media world. Welcome back to Elon Next, success after Elon. Joining us on the panel now are alumni working in broadcast media. First up, Ben Kaiser works as manager at CNN News Source. Carrie Taylor is a talent specialist at Discovery Communications. Jasmine Spencer is a reporter at WGHP TV. And finally, Brittany Dewey, news producer at WSOC TV. Thank you guys for all joining us today. I'm a broadcast major myself, and so with just a couple months away until I graduate, not looking forward to it. But what's the biggest advice you have for me before I graduate? I would say never lose contact of the professors you have here and your peers, because we all end up working with each other or together, and you can find a job that way through someone that you worked with or a professor who has connections that way. Because the business that I've learned when I graduated is very small. Everyone knows everybody or went to school with somebody. There, there's like two degrees of separation. Really, you know somebody who's worked with somebody you're talking with or somebody you're interviewing with. It really is, to, to echo what you said, it really is a small industry. It's unbelievably small. You go to NAB and you meet people and everybody, you sit at a dinner table where you don't think you know anybody, but you, everybody seems to know everybody. So just, that's, it's important to um, not only not burn bridges, but act right the entire time because you, reputations are quick and, and get around very quickly. That, Terry, is, that is extremely true because I was going to say the same thing. Um, I work over in Los Angeles and you'd be surprised at how many people know other people that you know from New York or Atlanta or wherever you've been. Um, so it's important because your name carries. You do good work and your name will carry. It will resonate everywhere. So that's important to know. I'm going to send it over to Ashley. Yeah, what's going on with hashtag Elon next, Ashley? We have a great question, a pretty popular one, but this one comes from Gary Grumbach. Uh, and he said, what's something you wish you learned about broadcasting while you were in school? Hashtag Elon next. He wants to take it away first. Brittany, yeah. you were about to say something. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's not really something you can learn in school. It's really more you have to be there, but just be prepared for completely bizarre hours. And they tell you that, but I mean, you're really going to work any shift. And just because you're hired to do, you know, Monday through Friday, normal nine to five, that doesn't mean you're going to end up doing that in two months. So just kind of be open to different positions, different hours, different shows, because you'll end up doing all of them. The industry is so fluid. You have people leaving and coming all the time. You're going to work with some people for years. You may work with some people for weeks. Be willing and ready to do everything. You may not be hired as a writer, but you're probably going to be doing some writing. And it's because when holes open in, 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 in shows and, and in shifts, you have to be there to help fill that hole. The more you're able to do that, the more marketable you are and the more you're going to see your career move up from there. So I should be flexible and get used to functioning on not a lot of sleep. Yeah. Hi, my name is Stephen Harris and I'm a junior interested in sports broadcasting. And I was wondering what advice the Elon Next panel would have for trying to decide on a career between uh, going on air versus staying behind the camera. 
Jasmine, since you are on air, how did, how did you choose? I would say, it's in reference to his specific question, on air or behind the scenes with sports, you really have to do it all. And we learned a lot of that here at Elon, and I was prepared to do it all. My first station was mostly one-man band, so I had to shoot, do everything, and then pretend like I didn't spend all day sweating and actually do the news. So being prepared to do it all, and then later as you progress, making that decision of maybe what you prefer behind the scenes or on camera as you progress in your career. Yes, and I started on camera um, and then gradually moved my way to the back because I recognized that I liked giving the instructions. I didn't like people telling me what to do so much. <laughs> um, and the fun business is behind the camera. I loved it, loved everything about it. So specifically what I do is I work with the talent on air, on reality television. And um, I started as an assistant at an agency. And it's the dirtiest work. You get your hands dirty, you break your nails, you like, you know, you don't sleep, you're crying sometimes at your desk, but like never in front of your boss, never in front of your boss. But you know, it's, it gets tough and you know, you, you slowly work your way out of that. And what happened was is that I ended up loving my talent that I had on the air. Every talent I worked with, the writers, I started working with writers and then slowly went to the reality TV stars that you guys know and love. And that's what I do at Discovery. I work with their talent. And so just don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Don't be scared to break a nail. You're never, never beneath doing anything. Um, so, yeah. It's not glamorous like no. people make it seem. Mm -hmm. Brittany, what drew you to producing? Um, that's where I was comfortable. I tried on camera at Elon. You know, you had the classes and ELN, but um, just being on camera made me really uncomfortable, as I'm sure you could tell. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. So, <laughs> I'm sweating. <laughs> um, so it's really, it's, I mean, it's what you like. If you like writing and being in control and not really having to take instructions from anyone, oh. definitely behind the camera. But for sports specifically, like Jasmine said, I think you have to be ready to really do, do it all. all. I'll take that all into consideration in just a couple months. So thank you all for joining us for this portion of Elon Next. When we come back, we'll be talking to some alums now working in strategic communications. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Elon Next. We're jumping right back into the conversation with a question from a strategic communications major. Here to give some advice on that question is our panel full of Elon grads working in strategic communications. Danielle Benici is an account executive at Gibbs and Soul Business Communications. Elise Del Merico is an account manager at Dodge Communications. Ashley McCulloch works in digital media development and strategic insights with MTV. Alexis Sykes is a recruitment associate for Teach for America. And Connor Britton works at Red Interactive Agency. Thank you guys so much for being with us today. We have a full house today on the stage. Um, so as I said, first we're gonna toss it over to a question from a strategic communications major, a senior here at Elon, so let's take a look. Hi, my name is Kelly Finner and I'm an Elon student interested in strategic communications. And my question for the Elon Next panel is, what would your advice be for a recent college graduate interested in starting their career as a PR or advertising professional? So that first, you know, jump into the real world, uh, what would you be your piece of advice for them looking for a career? I think for me, um, I interned right after I graduated from Elon, and I became a contractor for a few months after that. So um, I had, you know, a non-full-time job for nine months at a great agency, got a lot of good experience under my belt, and when I was hired at my next job, you know, I went in with a lot of experience. I could back up, you know, everything that I was talking about and I had learned. Um, and that's even propelled me further at the current agency I'm at just because of that solid base. So I think don't be afraid to have an internship or be a contractor upon graduation. Um, I've seen through my friends that's very common. So don't feel like a failure if you're interning right after you finish. Yeah. Great. I think another thing is utilizing the people around you. I know this was touched upon a little bit earlier, but we have a great network of alumni who are out there, and I know I did numerous informational interviews, um, just reaching out to alumni at agencies I was interested in. I know that's really helped me, um, you know, meet other people in the industry and get to know where I was working before going there. And then there are a lot of industry organizations out there as well. And when I was undergrad, you know, there are so many local ones. So just reaching out um, between Greensboro and Raleigh, there are PSA events, um, various other organizations for every other or, um, kind of 
facet of communication. So going to those events are also a great way to meet people. I have a feeling some students are going to be asking you guys for business cards <laughs> after this. So the network, the Elon network is growing. Mm -hmm. Um, now, next we have an audience question. Eric is uh, out there in the crowd again, so let's see what Eric found for us. Ashley, this time I'm here with senior Sean Lowers, who's a Stratcom major. So, Sean, what question do you have for the panel? Uh, I was wondering, with so many uh, strategic communications majors entering the field, what would be some methods you might use to make your online portfolio stand out? Another great question that I could, even though I'm not a Stratcom major, use some advice on with the online portfolios. Uh, do any of you have a expertise in that area? Connor? I'll jump in. Uh, I think the biggest opportunity you have with an online portfolio is to give yourself a voice and brand yourself in a certain way. So what you need to do above all else is make sure you're pursuing projects that you're passionate about, something that you're going to put everything into, um, because that really does stand out in the work that you do. Um, you know, a resume is great. It tells what you have done. It, it tells your employer, you know, where you've been. But your online portfolio is a great opportunity to say who you are, how you stand out from every other applicant. Great. Uh, anyone else have a great online portfolio you want to share with us? I'd say really take advantage of the experiential learning opportunities that you have at Elon. Um, I know um, the majority of my portfolio took place out inside of the classroom and outside of the classroom. So um, I think I was able to build that through organizations like Live Oak when I was here at Elon. Um, some of my strategic campaigns and strategic writing classes, we worked with clients, really leveraged those opportunities to go above and beyond maybe what's being asked of you. Um, ask those partners for other opportunities. I know that I networked a lot with some of the nonprofits that we worked with in our strategic campaigns and writing classes, um, which led to other opportunities. So really, whatever opportunities you have to get your hands on to do more writing and build that, those packages online is your best bet. And now I have a question for you guys. With that portfolio and resumes, um, what are maybe specific skills that you guys highlighted on your resume? Ashley, what's something that you highlighted when you graduated? Um, a lot of our digital experience that, I, that I've gotten here at school and student media and through my internships really helped open doors for me, um, especially because I didn't take a traditional stratcom path into an agency. I went to a network, so now I'm working on a different side. And having that digital experience really helped me uh, when applying for jobs. Everything's digital, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sound like an old woman, but it really is. <laughs> Great. Uh, well, thank you all so much for coming to be with us and uh, sharing some of your wisdom with uh, students like myself. Uh, now, when we come back, we're going to talk to some Elon grads working in entertainment and how you can break into that competitive industry. Elon Next will be right back. Welcome back to Elon Next, success after Elon. We have some former communication students working in the entertainment industry. Christian Binder is freelancing and working on a postgraduate internship with Turner Sports. Kristen Gensler is an assistant producer at Trailblazer Studios. And Liv Dubendorf has worked as an associate producer for original production and is now at Wake Forest University working on her graduate degree in film. Thank you guys all for joining us today. And so our first question actually comes from social media again. Sophomore Audrey Engelman uh, reached out to us and wants to know what the most exciting thing about working in the entertainment industry is. Uh, there's a lot of things that are exciting about working in the entertainment industry. Like when you, with me, when I work in sports, that's what I'm really passionate about. Um, so when I was down at Turner Sports in Atlanta, I got to do a lot of really cool things. I got to work uh, primarily for NCAA.com, making highlights and video features. Uh, but I got to work also with NBA.com as a producer and PGA.com as a producer. Uh, I got to go to the Women's Final Four in Nashville uh, for a week and act as a producer there and, and crank out some original content. I mean, all of that stuff is things that I love to do. And when you're doing something that you love, it's not really work. Yeah, I mean, I think every single day is different. And that's what makes it so exciting. You're never doing the same thing twice. So, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it's a trait that all jobs in communication share. But you have less of a chance of getting bored just because there's always something just a little bit different you can be doing. So um, I don't know, I switched a lot between traditional reality TV and docu-series, so something a little different. It's all of our hope. We don't want anything dull. <laughs> so now we're going to go out to Ashley in the audience with another student question for the panel. So Ashley, who's out there with you this time? Thanks, Eric. I am here with senior Devin Gailey, who is studying media, arts, and entertainment. And uh, you've got a pretty good question for him, right? Yeah. Um, hi, guys. My question is, um, how important is it to keep a LinkedIn account in our industry, and what are the benefits of maintaining a professional account? 
it's like Facebook for professionals, right? So you want to make sure that you have that professional looking profile, you know, a nice headshot. You don't want to be like, <laughs> like, in your, in, or, or like duck face, like in your, in your LinkedIn profile. But you want to, you know, make sure that you highlight your best qualities. Right? You, employers do look at that stuff. And if you have a, a, a premium account, you can see who's looking at your profile. Um, that stuff is really important to make sure that you keep it up to date with, and make sure that you put all, all the best things that you've, you've got on there. You know, you don't want to put something like, I worked at a grocery store when I was in high school. Like, no, that's not important. Don't put that on there, like that kind of thing. So for me, personally, um, I've never gotten a job through LinkedIn. I maintain it as a formality. But um, I would say more important is maintaining a profile on Staff Me Up and making sure your Facebook is professional because there are a lot of groups in the entertainment industry targeted at very specific jobs. So one that I was a member of was I need, I'm looking for a producer. And people would post whatever, whatever job openings they had, you would apply, but it's automatically linked to your Facebook so people can see what you are doing, um, which is a valuable uh, lesson that I think we've tried to learn in college, but you know, eh. um, but yeah, LinkedIn, I, I maintain one, but I don't, I don't really get so much work off of it. So it's situational, so you know, Yes. but a reminder, everyone go clean up their Facebook before you apply for a job. <laughs> My name is John Smith and I'm a senior interested in cinema. My question for the Elon Next panel is, what is the best way to develop and maintain networks in the professional field that I'm pursuing? Kristen, we'll start with you. How can you help John out? Um, for me, networking was always really a scary idea to me when I was in college. I thought about it, you know, having to meet with like CEOs of companies and the suit and tie and that just didn't fit my personality. So the best um, type of networking I found is actually networking right here at Elon with, if you're a senior, networking with a freshman, if you are a freshman, networking with a, se a senior, because those seniors are the people that are going to be gradu or hiring you when you graduate. So, and it's the people that I'm looking for when I'm looking for to hire someone. So I think it's really important just to even, uh, just network cross class. Don't just know who your class is, know everyone in your major. And I think bouncing off of that, it's really important to, um, be yourself first of all but also be be kind you know be a, a basic human being you know people are going to remember who you are not necessarily what you did um, you don't want to be remembered by a work you want to be remembered by being somebody who was always there you know being on time being able to stay late and do extra work being helpful you know those kinds of basic things if you can show somebody in any kind of situation because you never know who's watching uh, networking is co constantly help happening. You know, you want to be on your on top of your game all the time. Lots of networking right here in this room for the weekend and with homecoming. Coming up, we'll hear from a mix of our visiting alumni. Stick with us for more Elon Next success after Elon. Welcome back to Elon Next success after Elon. We decided to switch things up a little bit and bring every industry onto the stage to get some different perspectives on the questions you have for our alumni. Hi, my name is Allison Rinkars. I'm a senior and to be honest, I don't really know what I want to do after school. My question for the panel is, how essential is it to know exactly what you're going to do after you graduate? Now I like that question because even though I think I know what I want to do when I graduate, I have a feeling I really don't. You know, I feel like it's always changing, whether it's your major or uh, what job you're looking for. So what was your experience like? Well, I think uh, I just graduated last May. And uh, I think even now, I'm not entirely sure where the path is leading in the future. Um, but where I started was I got an internship in the field that uh, I was interested in right after school. And I wasn't sure, you know, it's not necessarily a commitment to a full-time job there forever, but it is something to start out. So uh, I got hired at my internship and I love the job now. Great. Um, I had a experience moving to New York. I decided instead, you know, what I really wanted to do because I knew I had passion for so many different things. I decided I'm going to go to New York that has everything there. <laughs> and so I moved there with a, just a freelance position and I got the opportunity to talk to so many different people and I ended up finding a job that I would never have even considered, but I love, and it's been a great experience. Awesome. Yeah, I think that you got you just have to be open to everything. Uh, you don't know what you don't want unless you try it first. Um, mm -hmm. And for me, 
I was on air here when, when I was a student here, but I did both sides of it. And I think that we, we talked about that earlier with sports, like you have to be able to do the whole thing. Um, and I applied in my job search, I applied to both on air jobs and production jobs. I wound up getting a production job. And in the back of my head when I first started, I was like, man, I really miss being on air. But I got into it and then I was like, you know what? I really like this better. The on-air life is, is such a grind. And if, if that's your thing, that's your thing. That's fine. There's nothing, nothing wrong with that. But you, gotta, you have to be at least willing to try things before you know what you don't want. Sorry we're putting you through the grind again. <laughs> no, today, it's, but. it's fine. <laughs> it, it's, it's old, old times. I used to host on this very puck. So. Oh, see? <laughs> yeah. So Welcome nostalgic. Back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so for the last hour, you guys have been giving us great advice. But what's the best advice that you've ever gotten? I guess uh, be open to every opportunity and say yes to everything possible. Um, even if you are not 100% sure that you can do it, say yes and figure it out uh, after you're already in, in the thick of it. I like that. So. Yeah, don't say no, I think is the biggest key um, uh, to, to success in any of the industries that we've been talking about. I know at CNN, um, the minute you say that's not my job, or I don't know how to do that, or do I have to do that, or do I really have to work those hours, is the minute that people start looking at you differently. Um, you're not there to be a slave by any stretch of the imagination, no matter where you work. But at the same time, saying no can really, can really hurt. And in the beginning, that's what I was told. I said, I was told, you know, any opportunity that you take, you may not know how to do it. Take it, learn it, and it's going to uh, do well for you as you as you move forward. And it and it did. Yeah, and sort of off of that, make yourself invaluable. The more things that you can do, the, be the more likely it is that you're going to stay on or move up or anything like that. If you can help other people outside of your comfort zone. It, it, it just goes along with never, never saying no. You just, you just gotta make sure that you make yourself a, a marketable person. You know, if you, if you can uh, just help, you know, it, it all comes down to that. Great, well clearly Elon has been a wonderful springboard for you guys and I hope we'll be just as lucky. Uh, and thank you all so much for coming to join us. I know we both are soaking in everything we can uh, to get ready for that jump into the real world. So <laughs> thank you all so much. Uh, we appreciate all your wonderful words of wisdom. And we want to thank all of you guys for joining us uh, for all of your questions and for tweeting at us. From all of us here at the Elon School of Communications, this has been Elon Next, Success After Elon. <laughs>